When you think about businesses that are selling through the roof, like Skims or Allbirds, sure, you think about a great product, a cool brand, and great marketing. But an often overlooked secret is actually the businesses behind the business, making selling and for shoppers buying simple. For millions of businesses, that business is Shopify. It's home of ShopPay, the number one checkout in the world. You can use it to boost conversions up to 50%, meaning way less carts going abandoned and way more sales going through to checkout. Upgrade your business and get the same checkout all birds uses. Sign up for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash income, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash income to upgrade your selling today. Shopify.com slash income. Max Bankman, I'm the new doctor. Welcome aboard the Odyssey. ABC Thursdays. This ship is heaven. We're tending to our passengers' dreams. I'm in. From 911 executive producer Ryan Murphy comes a splashy new drama on a luxury cruise ship with Joshua Jackson and Don Johnson. It's your job to keep everyone alive. She's in VFIT. One, two, three. Clear. I have a pulse. You're going to be okay. Dr. Odyssey. Thursdays, 9, 8 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. Hey friends, I'm Rachel Grohl and I'm your host for the Hearing Jesus podcast, where I help you to know God and to make him known. Today, we're going to go through some Q&A questions that I've gotten over the last couple weeks. And I try to do this once a month or maybe every other month because there are always questions that come in that are really, really good. And I think sometimes they're representations of the questions that the larger community has at a whole. And so what I try to do is wait until I have several questions around the same topic and then address that at at once. So if you are somebody that has questions, whether it's about the Bible or something I've said on the podcast or just general issues about faith or God, feel free to email me, rachel at shehears.org, or you could send me a message on one of the social media platforms. I always love to hear from you and I love to hear what your questions are. They help me understand how to better serve you. And so if you're just joining us, welcome to the show. Today is a little bit different of a show. We're doing a QA and a format today. But what we typically do is Bible study. We just finished up the Matthew series. I have a very exciting series for you next week. And then the following week, we're going to be going into the book of Proverbs. And so there's going to be extra resources available for you for the book of Proverbs. I'm working on a workbook to go with that as well. Next week, what we're doing is, I'm so excited about this, we're going to do a missions week. And if you have been listening to the show for any length of time, you know that missions is heavy in my heart. God called me to be a representative of him. And I love to tell people and show people and guide people how to have his heart for the nations. And so we're going to be focusing on a different country each day. I'm going to do a couple of the episodes. I will be in all of the episodes, but three of the conversations are with my friends that live around the world. And again, it's an effort to, uh, I think, number one, help guide you in understanding what God's heart for the nations even means. Number two, share some of the things that God has been teaching me recently about his heart for the nations. And number three, expose you to the good that he's doing around the world. I think it's very easy to get so caught inside of our own heads and our own minds that we forget that God is moving and working around the world. I think in light of the culture and even just the season that we're in right now, we're just coming out of the American elections. It's helpful to have some perspective, some global perspective, because no matter who is in the White House, Jesus is on the throne. And I love reminding people of that. And I think what better way than to showcase the testimony of God around the world. And so super excited about that. That will also give you an opportunity to catch up if you're behind it all on any of the Bible studies. The following week and through the end of the year, we're going to be studying the book of Proverbs. And then in January, we're going into the book of Genesis. So lots of good things coming down the pike. If you want to dive a little bit deeper with us and get access to those workbooks and the supplemental materials, those are all found on our Patreon page. We have ad-free episodes, we have the journaling prompts, we have lots of extra things going on there just starting at $5 a month. You can find the link for that in the show notes. So let's dive in. I don't know how many questions we're going to get through today, but I do want to try to attempt to answer as many as I can. 
The first question, I think I might have talked about this before, but I'm going to talk about it again. It's on the topic of miscarriage. And then also, I have had a lot of questions recently on the topic of suffering. So I'm going to try to lump the two of those together just because I think there's issues of suffering within miscarriage. I myself have had three miscarriages. If you've known my testimony, I have three healthy girls and between those three healthy girls, I had three miscarriages. So I know firsthand the brokenness and the heartache that comes from miscarriage. I think for me at the time, I was when my first miscarriage happened, I was very young in my faith and I blamed God. I blame God and I just had this perspective of like, why God, why did you allow this to happen? And then I think in the larger discussion on suffering, you know, I had somebody that reached out and said, you know, I really struggled to understand how people that are living for him were made to really suffer. I think with suffering, it's always a struggle to understand what it has to do with pain and loss and struggle, especially when we're living for the Lord. Perhaps maybe this listener's question is different now that we have done the series on Mark and we've talked about the suffering of Jesus. I think first and foremost that we have to recognize that Jesus came as the suffering servant. He was a leader, of course, but he himself suffered immensely. And as his representatives, we're not going to escape the suffering of this world. If he was unable to escape it, we're unable to escape it. I think suffering and brokenness is the reality of living in a broken world. You know, ever since sin entered the world, we have had to deal with the brokenness of the result of that sin, the consequence of that sin. The reality was, is we were not made for the brokenness of this world. Our hearts are tender because we were not made, we were not created for the brokenness of this world. It's the fault of sin and the enemy that causes this struggle. And yet we still know that we serve the God of hope. So how do we reconcile those things? How do we reconcile it when bad things happen in this world? Well, I think first off, sometimes God gets the rap for things that the enemy actually has done. You know, it says in the scripture in John that it is the enemy that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And Jesus says, I have come to give you life and life abundant. And that abundance is not just financial, it's with health and with peace and with relationships. But oftentimes what happens is the enemy comes to steal and destroy those things that God has prepared for us. Now, that does not mean that we are hopeless or helpless, but what it does mean is we have to recognize that there's always going to be this tension, this side of heaven. Until we get to the other side of heaven or until Jesus comes back, we have to deal with the brokenness of this world. The consolation in that is that we don't do it alone. We don't do it alone. I, and you know, I didn't, I wasn't planning on sharing it this week, but I'm just going to be honest with you. This has been a really difficult week for us. Uh, my daughter, my middle daughter was in a really bad car accident on this past Sunday. And if you could pray for her, I'd appreciate it. Her name's Adeline. She was in a really bad car wreck. And when I arrived at the scene of the accident, I did not know how she made it out alive. I mean, I do know. I know it was Jesus. And obviously there was angels that were protecting her and, and God has a bigger plan for her. But the fire department said that if she had been hit at any other angle, even any other slight angle, she would have been dead. At 17 years old, the fact that she's dealing with all of this it's hard. Now she walked away miraculously with not even a broken bone. We thought she was going to be severely bruised, not even a bruise on her body. She's stiff. She's sore. She's shaken up. We're all shaken up. Emotionally, I think is, is going to be the worst part, but those are things that are going to heal. We're getting her in, you know, so the support that she needs. But this entire week when I've been having to deal with police and, you know, she was taken by hospital or by ambulance. And so I had to deal with some stuff at the hospital and we had to deal with the insurance companies and all of those things. It's been very stressful, very chaotic on top of helping her feel better and manage her pain and the aftermath, the emotional math aftermath for her. And of course, my other daughters and just our family. And I was driving through town the other day. I think it was, must've been a couple days ago, two days ago. And I was praying, I had dropped my other daughter off at school and I was praying and I said, Lord, what is, what is wrong with me? Like at this point, 
I'm holding it all together. I am, I've not been crying. I did cry. I cried at the scene. You know, I broke down at the scene when we realized we, her doors were, I mean, we couldn't get her doors open. They had to be pried open. I, when I saw the car, I did cry. But since that time, I've not cried. And typically, I wear my heart on my sleeve. You know, I'm an emotional mama bear. And I've just been in like work mode, I guess. And so as I was praying, I was like, Lord, like, I want to surrender this to you. Am I, is there something broken in me? Am I stuffing down my emotions? Like what's going on? And he very clearly said, you asked me for supernatural peace. That's what this is. I'm getting a little teary eyed now thinking about it, but it's not that God planned this accident to happen. It's not that he wanted this accident to happen, but he is using it. He's using it to teach me about his plan for what supernatural peace even looks like. He's using it to speak to Addie, to show her this is part of her testimony. You know, she's got an evangelistic heart, and I think this has even propelled that even further. And she recognizes how short life is and and how much we take for granted. He's used it to draw my girls closer together and heal some fractures that were in their relationship. He's used it for our entire family to bring us closer together, watching our words and our actions. He's just using it. We've seen lots of things happen behind the scenes that the Lord has just been using and moving and working in the midst of it. And so I think when I'm talking about this, what's this have to do with suffering? Well, when we go through hard seasons of life, we have to recognize that that is part of life, this side of heaven, but we don't have to do it alone. We serve a God that is the peace giver. He gives us super, supernatural peace. I'm a living testimony of that. Our family is a living testimony of that. In situations where we should not have peace, we have peace. That's the God that we serve. He promises never to leave us, never to forsake us. He walks through all of those things with us. It's our responsibility to invite him in and to allow him to give us the peace. Now, if he wanted to give me the peace and I would rather just be anxious and worked up about it, well, that's not going to look the same as if I surrender to the peace giver. I hope that's helpful. I know that this is a hard topic to unpack in just a few minutes, but that's my encouragement that you would seek the peace giver and invite him into the situation. Hey friends, are you loving the deep conversations, the biblical insight, and the spiritual growth content that I share on the Hearing Jesus podcast? Well, I've got some fantastic news for you. Starting at just $5 a month, you can become a member of our Patreon community and take your Hearing Jesus experience to a whole new level. When you join Patreon, you gain access to ad-free episodes, daily journaling prompts and worksheets, monthly bonus content, personalized Q&A sessions with me, giveaways, and more. As a Patreon supporter, you're not just a listener, you're a valued member of my inner circle. But that's not all. Our Patreon community is a place where you can connect with like-minded people who share your passion for spiritual growth, engage in meaningful discussions, share your thoughts, and be part of something that's truly special. Plus, we've got some awesome perks lined up for our Patreon supporters, from shout-outs on the podcast to exclusive merch and more. So if you're ready to dive deeper into the journey of hearing Jesus, head on over to patreon.com forward slash hearing Jesus. Your support makes a real difference, allowing us to continue bringing you inspiring content week after week. Also, a portion of any income from Patreon goes to support children through our partnership with Compassion International. Again, head to patreon.com forward slash hearing Jesus. Thank you for being a vital part of the Hearing Jesus community. Together, let's learn to live out our faith in our everyday life. Hey friends, One of the things that I hate is having stinky laundry when I come back home from a trip. And so this past month when I went to Texas, I actually took some Earth Breeze laundry sheets with me. I've been trying them out and so far I absolutely love them. You know, doing laundry while traveling can sometimes be a hassle, but that's why I love using these things. They make tackling laundry, even on the go, super easy and convenient. With Earth Breeze, you can simply grab a sheet and toss it in your laundry. It's that simple. Plus, they're lightweight, they're compact. There's no liquid, so you can easily pack them in your carry-on without worrying about anything. Here's the best part. Earth Breeze comes in eco-friendly, plastic-free packaging, so you can actually feel good about your choices even when you're traveling. If you want a laundry solution that's simple and effective for your next trip, give Earth Breeze a try. Right now, you can get 40% off your subscription at earthbreeze.com forward slash hearing Jesus. It's the perfect way to keep your clothes clean without the hassle, wherever your adventures may take you. 
Hey there, friends. With holiday season just around the corner, we're all looking for ways to save time and stress less. That's where HelloFresh comes in. They deliver fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes straight to your doorstep. Seriously, it's a game changer for home cooking. Whether you're craving comforting foods or trying to please picky eaters, HelloFresh has you covered with rotating menus of 50 recipes to choose from each week. No more recipe ruts. You can whip up fun, flavorful meals without hunting down specialty ingredients. And their pre-portioned ingredients means less food waste. It's perfect for teaching teens how to cook. I can't tell you how much time HelloFresh has saved me in the kitchen. I love how easy it is to customize recipes so that every meal is just how I like it. Plus, there's always something new to try. Some of my favorites, their delicious tacos and the creamy garlic pasta, always a hit at my dinner table. And guess what? You can check out HelloFresh Market for over 100 add-on items like desserts and quick breakfasts. This month, they even have Thanksgiving items to help wow your crowd with pretty minimal effort. Now for the best part, get 10 free meals at hellofresh.com forward slash free hearing Jesus. This offer applies across seven boxes for new subscribers only and varies by plan. That's right. 10 free HelloFresh meals. Just go to hellofresh.com forward slash free hearing Jesus. Remember, it's America's number one meal kit and you don't want to miss out on this delicious offer. The next question is about... I guess you would say it for, I don't want to read the whole thing, but it, it's a question about quote unquote living for sin. And this was a reader that, or I'm sorry, a listener that had a question about their own walk with the Lord and the last two years, the spiritual growth that they've experienced over the last two years, it has led them to a place where they recognize that they had been living in sin. They were living together. And so they started attending a church as they've gotten closer to the Lord. They recognized that what they were doing was not okay. And so they basically, you know, decided to separate themselves and wait for marriage to have sex. But in the meantime, they're still living together because of their finances. And so this listener was really upset because they went to volunteer at a particular ministry in their church and the pastor spent some time with them, led them through a little bit of a Bible study, but then essentially told them that they could not serve in this leadership role until they were no longer living together or until they were married. And so she reached out because she felt devastated. She felt unwelcome. She felt not good enough. She was confused. She still feels that way. And she said, you know, I get that pastor just supposed to lead you away from sin and stand up against it, but I was not expecting to be told those things. My question is, is what he said biblical? Should we not serve until we are no longer sinful? I know that's not possible because we are all sinners, but is there truth in what he said? I've tried to ask God this question and open the, up the word, but I'm scared my head is getting in the way. So here's the thing. One of the things that one of my co-pastors used to always say is when you go fishing, you have to catch the fish before you clean the fish. What that meant in spiritual terms is it's Jesus that is responsible for cleaning up our hearts and cleaning up the mess of our lives. But initially what happens is we get drawn to who he is. And then the process through our relationship with him, he starts to pull some things out of our hearts and our minds and our lives as we grow closer to him. That process is called sanctification. Often, it is not an instantaneous thing. It is a process. Sanctification, becoming more like Jesus, is a process where little by little, he starts to remove the things that don't look like him, and he starts to add in the things that do like him. So the fact that you were already feeling like the Lord had, you know, gotten you to a place where you recognize that you should not be having sex together, Obviously, that is you listening to the Lord. But I will say that there is a fine line between still being in a place of sanctification and still being in a place where you are becoming more like Jesus and leadership. Now, that's not to say that you there is not grace for you. That's not to say that you know, you're in your financial situation and, you know, I don't know what that financial situation is, but you're doing your best. You're trying, you know, you're still living together, but maybe it's separate bedrooms or whatever it is. God sees that. God sees that effort. God sees what you're doing. And I'm not saying that there's condemnation for that. In an ideal situation, yes, you would be living separately or you would be married. 
But I think there's a fine line between that and then being in a place of leadership, especially because this role was with children. Because here's the thing about that. Children will look to any adult in their lives and they will want to emulate them. Anything that they see, especially in a church, when it's somebody in leadership over them at the church, they, in their young minds, they don't understand. They they put you in the same level as pastor. You know, my husband and I, we did children's ministry for a really long time. I was the children's pastor, but the kids all called my husband, Pastor Tim. Why? because he was their Sunday school teacher. When you put an adult in a place of leadership over children, they will automatically see you in the role of pastor. It doesn't matter if you are or not. It doesn't matter if you're a brand new Christian. They're going to see you as leadership, which means they're going to see anything that they see you doing as okay. It's going to seem like it's an endorsement from the church, from God. It's an endorsement for their own lives. So especially when it comes to children that cannot rationalize the difference between somebody that's living together for financial reasons versus somebody that's living together for sexual reasons, the kids are just going to see, oh, it's okay to live together. That is in violation of God's standard for what he calls us to as believers. Now, please hear my heart in this. I'm not condemning you. I understand there's different circumstances or or whatever. But when it comes to being put in a position of leadership over kids, I do agree with your pastor. And I say that tenderly. I'm trying to speak the truth in love. But because I worked as a children's pastor, I know, you know, in our situation, of course, we were married and we were already living together. But one of the things that we became committed to was not drinking alcohol in public because I felt like if I as a children's pastor was sitting at a restaurant and I had you know something that was clearly alcohol in front of me and one of the families in our community came in and they saw me the kids were going to say oh it's okay to just drink alcohol and not that there's anything wrong with adults drinking a glass of wine however one of the aspects of our church that we were serving in at the time was we were heavily involved in outreach ministry, which meant that we dealt with a lot of families that were struggling with addiction issues and alcoholics and, um, you know, recovering addicts and all those kinds of things, homeless population. And so for the people that God called us to serve, he was calling us to a higher standard so that publicly we could be, quote unquote, above reproach. And what that means, and I guess what I would say is, you know, the scripture talks about avoiding even the appearance of evil. I think, especially when you're talking about kids, you have to be really careful in that area. You might know that you and your fiance are not sleeping together, but the kids won't know that. And that's not an appropriate conversation to even have with them. And so I, I'm praying that you can recognize that, you know, I don't know how the pastor delivered that message. It sounds like you're kind of hurt. Um, but I, I would challenge you to pray through that and to ask the Lord about that. Perhaps the Lord is pushing you to move out or to get married. I don't know what your situation is. But there's a difference between condemnation and conviction. You know, when when you're feeling disciplined, it's hard. I get it. When you're feeling disciplined either by the Holy Spirit or a spiritual leader in your life, when you're feeling disciplined, it can feel hard. Feel those emotions and then respond appropriately. But I think he what he said was said in love. What I'm saying is being said in love, recognizing that perhaps God is drawing you to a higher standard because he's calling you deeper into this walk with him, this process of sanctification, this process of becoming more like him. You know, if it was the voice of the enemy, well, number one, he wouldn't tell you that, you know, the enemy wants you to be living in sin. But number two, the voice of the enemy condemns. The voice of the enemy says, you're bad. The voice of the enemy says, you're unwelcome. You're not good enough. The voice of the Holy Spirit says, I want more for you. And so I would encourage you to spend some time in prayer, just looking at the difference between those two and recognizing that God's always going to call you to a higher standard. And sometimes he's going to use people to do it. And that process sometimes hurts. So I will be in prayer for you. And um, I just pray that you would receive that in love and recognize that I think you're not alone. There's a lot of people that are in your situation. There's always grace, but there's a difference between leadership and recognizing the high standard we have to have, especially for our children. Okay, let's pray. God, thank you for the listeners and the way that they ask questions and trust me with the answers to represent your heart for them. Lord, I pray that you would help 
people just to hear my heart, to hear your heart, and to recognize how much you love them. Lord, I pray for the process of sanctification in all of our lives as we continue to strive to become more like you. God, help us to accept those moments that are painful to hear and recognize that you never leave us alone. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Proud member of Converge Podcasts. Did you know that children without basic literacy skills are four times more likely to drop out of school? That the number of books in a home has a greater influence on a child's academic success than their parents' income? Let that sink in. I'm Heather Drago, host of That's a Hard No. This fall, we spent time with our friends at the Literacy Cooperative learning about the importance of getting kids to read early and often. This holiday season, you can give the gift of reading and support literacy and childhood development on a community level. For just $25, you can send one child a new age-appropriate book every month for a year. Support this initiative and learn more about the Literacy Cooperative at literacycooperative.org slash donate. Greetings and God bless. This is Tyler Burns. And this is Dr. Jamar Tisby. And we want to invite you to check out our podcast, Pass the Mic, Dynamic Voices for a Diverse Church. Pass the Mic has been speaking directly to the core concerns of Black Christians for over a decade. On our show, we've got interviews from theologians, historians, actors, activists, and so much more. Not to mention heartfelt, open dialogue on some of the heaviest issues facing the church in the United States. Be sure to subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you there on the next Pass, Pass the Mic. The Mic.